Hello and welcome to this brand new episode of Smart Money. In today's day and age of artificial intelligence, quantum computing, hyper automation and industry cloud platforms, it is important to stay relevant with your investments too. So today we talk about innovation in investing, why innovation is important and what are the different kinds of innovation you need to know about in 2023. Joining us on the show is Anish Tawakli, who's the Deputy CIO, Equity and Head of Research at ICICI Prudential to talk about how to invest in a prudent manner in this world which is seeing a rapid technological changes. Anish, thanks a lot for joining in. You know, at the onset, I want to ask you about uh, what exactly is innovation in investing? So innovation deals with all the changes that are taking place around us, right? And uh, very often we think of innovation as being synonymous with technology, but that's not all innovation is about. I mean, obviously there's innovation in technology. Uh, you know, we've all seen the world when we moved from, <clears throat> from say, LP players to tape recorders and now, you know, uh, audio on demand. But actually innovation is much broader than that. Innovation is practically taking place in every industry. So for example, if you looked at airlines, the world has changed with the innovation that low cost, no frills carriers brought in, right? Um, if you looked at banking, uh, you know, we all used to go to banks, branches to collect cash. Today we collect cash through ATMs and mm -hmm. we don't even need cash because we've moved to other digital forms of payment. I don't even remember the last time I went to a bank branch, to be honest. And, yeah. uh, you know, the other day I was trying to recall where did I keep my passbook? I needed it for some reason to change some data on the Aadhaar card, but I couldn't even find that. So I get your point. I mean, things yeah. are changing rapidly. Very rapidly. So innovation actually takes place across industries, right? And typically, like, where does it become invest, uh, relevant in investing? Uh, what you find, right, uh, broadly you can group in any sector, right? You can group companies into companies that are struggling and there are companies that are winning market share, right? The winners are ones who are gaining market share and doing it profitably. They are typically doing it based on some innovation, mm -hmm. right? So if you looked at the banking industry, banks that were that were better at you know, uh, expanding the ATM network, better at uh, launching better internet platforms, mobile platforms gain market share. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, the no-fills carriers we talked about, right? Today, modern retailers are gaining market share. So typically in any industry, mm -hmm. the market share gainers and the ones are the ones who are innovating. Obviously, there are some exceptions like commodities, there's very little innovation. But in most industries, other industries, you find innovative companies gaining market share. Mm -hmm. And if you enter these companies at the right time at a reasonable valuation then you end up creating creating wealth so that's the million dollar question right how mm. do you figure out which is the innovation that you need to latch on to and when to enter so first let's talk about uh, se sectors like technology where there's massive innovation happening also sectors like healthcare mm. what are the different kinds of innovation that's happening in these two sectors well, uh, you said techno healthcare and? Uh, technology. Technology. Well, technology, it's, yeah. it's really all over the place, right? Yeah. Uh, everything that you needed to sit on your PC for is now being delivered on your phones, right? Mm -hmm. you, uh, your phone has more comp uh, computing power than most PCs would have had uh, when they were first launched. So technology, it's, it's a no-brainer, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, in healthcare, actually the delivery, like the way technology is being used both for diagnosis for uh, increasing access uh, and then for treatments, right? The treatments that are available today are obviously far more advanced than treatments that were available earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously something has changed, right? The, the machines that are delivering them are superior, et cetera, et cetera. Similarly, uh, the drugs, right? The drugs that are available today uh, are all innovative drugs. In mm -hmm. fact, the entire pharma industry, the prescription, the non-generic part of it is, is innovative. So, uh, I mean, in both these industries, there's, uh, there's phenomenal innovation, mm -hmm. actually, at every step of, of the way. So, you know, how do you decide, right? I mean, we have a very helpful plate coming up in a bit on what is the uh, innovation, you know, different kinds of innovation in IT, different kinds of innovation in healthcare. Uh, so, for example, in healthcare, right, I mean, you have API, formulations, generics. Now, in biosimilars, a lot is being done. Now, we know the listed players that have exposure here. But how do you decide how much of your portfolio goes into these companies which are innovating? Because trends are changing by the hour. Forget about by the year. Yeah. Uh, how do you decide how much exposure to have? See, uh, well, you always have to uh, balance the opportunities that are uh, available in the value space mm -hmm. and then in the uh, quality and growth space, right? So uh, two years back, right, we thought all the opportunities were in the value space. 
today i think uh, uh, opportunities are more evenly distributed right so mm. how do you decide is really based on uh, what are the valuations mm. and what is the market expecting so it's actually good to uh, when when you think of investing in innovative companies right it's not just the multiple that matters you also have to say what are the market's expectations mm. typically you do well in investing in these companies when these companies beat expectations when expectations are raised right it's not a matter of saying look 30 is a good multiple and 40 is not a good multiple if a company is at 30 times but it misses earnings disappoints it's going to do badly if mm. a company is at 40 times and it beats earnings it's going to do well mm. and therefore it's good it's it's very important to have a real good grip on what whether the business model will succeed or not and what is its potential for delivery if it succeeds if your expectations are outrageous then even if it succeed you won't make money absolutely right. okay so you know you were briefly mentioning banking i want to take that discussion forward do you have any stats of how much the deposit market share of private banks has risen over the past many years right compared to psus because of the whole digital and technological innovation that we've seen with private banks yeah so i mean there's very good data i mean available on this and you can see that uh, the private banks basically have gained share from uh, from the public sector banks and uh, the reasons they did it were because they were able to they use technology more they lose use technology both to reduce the cost of service and uh, to improve the quality of service right mm -hmm. so this whole notion of targeting uh, the more affluent customers with relationship managers right which who who had with them technology at their disposal which helps them deliver better service uh, the whole notion of sort of not having the customers go to the branch but mm -hmm. be served uh without uh, you know having the need for ex large branches or branch staff uh, serviced at least uh, mm. it has been has been uh, what is driving these uh, market share growth mm. and it is very clear that these banks have innovated more and have gained market share uh, mm. pretty substantially right? okay in fact yeah. we have a very helpful table there you know on what the innovation has been uh, what the impact of innovation has been on private sector banking versus psu so psus have lost a lot of market share there we have a helpful table on the screen so way back in 2018 i think the psu uh, market share was about 50% and now it's come down to you know almost 35% yeah. or so and private sector banks has picked up but the question that we're asking now anish is that you know a lot of this is perhaps in the price you think cuz a well known story that a lot of these banks whether it's icici bank hdfc bank kotak are doing a lot in digital lending lot in digital banking uh, has this uh, innovation been priced into these stocks you think see with banks uh, banks are a cyclical industry so mm. it's difficult to say what's the right price unless you have a view on the cycle mm. and uh, i wouldn't want to comment on the specific valuations of specific sure. banks but broadly we are positively uh, we view uh, the indian economy as well positioned from a cyclical perspective mm. so there should be uh, opportunities broadly in the financial services space not just banks okay okay yeah. so coming back to the different types of innovation just trying to understand you know what else is out there there are several sectors right i mean we spoke about some of them whether it's airlines banking but now there are new age sectors coming through where there's a lot of innovation happening uh, since you have a fund as well you're investing in this space tell us about the different types of innovation that we're looking at no so uh, so to to your point right the starting out there's uh, a phenomenal amount of radical innovation that is taking place in this mm -hmm. space right who would have thought of electric vehicles a few years back mm -hmm. or who would have thought of new uh, new age energy sources right uh, some time back we thought uh, of solar energy as something that you know uh, it's part of the hippie culture where yeah. you know if you're out of the mainstream you you talk about these kind of things right all of that is now happening uh, as we speak and it's actually penetrating our homes right the amount of soon we'll be using solar energy or we maybe already be using solar energy in our homes without actually uh, yeah. realizing it yeah. right so there's electric vehicles there's new energy sources there's uh, um uh, i mean new uh, the energy field is uh, energy and transportation is seeing phenomenal that's amount. largely radical innovation radical right? innovation yeah okay. but then you have people coming up with new business models right yeah Where, uh, which is using existing uh, technology but mm. delivering it in a certain uh, different way so that's so for disruptive. example uh, disruptive or incremental both okay. right uh, disruptive and incremental both uh, so for example and it's almost uh, very often difficult to categorize it right if innovation is successful it may seem small but it causes a lot of disruption mm -hmm. right uh, when we move from phones as primarily a voice device where you paid for voice mm. yeah to when voice is free 
we would have thought it's a small change in the pricing model. But the amount of disruption it's caused is phenomenal. Yeah. Right? So, uh, disruption, whether it's radical or the d amount of disruption is, it causes is often only known with hindsight. Mm -hmm. Right? But the point is uh, innovation can take place either in fundamentally new products or delivering new product, uh, delivering similar products in a different way, right? Which enhances the value, which makes them easier to access, or using different processes, right? To uh, to uh, deliver those products. Mm. So, frankly, uh, Sonia, it's 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 beyond a point not really meaningful to say whether <coughs> it's going to be disruptive or not. Every company tries to be disruptive. You have to look at it as things are happening and saying, look, are the changes that are, ha is these companies being able to translate this innovation mm. into market share gains and are able to do it profitably? Because if a company is able to translate its innovation mm. into market share gains profitably, then it's earning the right to grow mm -hmm. and it's winning in the marketplace. That's what you need to look for. So do Rather you want to share some examples with us? Maybe not, I mean, in the listed space. It's, these are not recommendations, of mm -hmm. course, but uh, examples of companies that have successfully, uh, you know, made that so transition. I, I wouldn't want to take names, but yeah, low-cost carriers made that transition. Okay. Let's let's take examples of uh, industries where initially the you had innovations that were unsuccessful and then now we are having a spate of innovations that are successful. Mm. Initially, a lot of people came into retailing, right? Modern retailing. You had a lot of blow-ups there. But now you have companies doing modern retailing, doing it successfully and profitably. What's the difference? The difference is that the first generation of, of modern retailers, right, thought of retailing as just the stores. Mm. So it was a real estate game, right? Let's open as many stores as possible in convenient locations. Mm. But in retailing, actually, the store is just one end of what you, uh, one end of the business, right? Yeah. It's not the entire business. Retailing is not just about stores, it's about the entire supply chain, mm. right? So a good retailer not just has good stores, but has a really efficient supply chain, controls the warehousing, has really good links with manufacturers which allow it to control the products that, sure. that are supplied. So to, you, I, you were talking about how do you decide what's successful or not. You have to actually spend time to understand what is it that will allow this innovator hmm. to deliver better value or a distinctive experience to, to the customers. If you okay. can convince yourselves of that, then you should take the story. Okay, that's forward. why folks like you are there, right? To do hopefully, all the hopefully, hopefully we have to do some all the that. research and to, uh, put it out there. But let's do one thing. Let's take a short commercial break. A very interesting conversation. Don't go anywhere. Come back in just a bit. We'll continue to talk about innovation in investing.